Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Let's talk about the Indiana Fever game against the Washington Mystics. Told y'all in comments that I would be on this to talk about this as well. I know Nick did a response to this game. Before we jump in, thank you all to your continued support of our channel. Please be sure to ring that bell when you subscribe so you get all the up-to-the-minute updates. And definitely like, comment, and share our videos. We greatly appreciate it. And watch them. Watch them in detail because I say a lot of stuff, man. Put that thing in 1.25 so I sound a little bit faster. You can hear everything. And you want to watch 15 minutes. You can watch it in like 10, right? I do that. So I would expect you to do the same. <clears throat> Let's jump right into this goddamn game. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. What the fuck was Christy Sides thinking about when she decided to coach this game? Christy Sides, I tell you, if, if you're a player and you play for that woman, you can't be confident. She doesn't instill confidence in a team. There's nothing about her that makes you feel like, yes, we're going to get this done. Nothing. Nothing. There are people that had opinions. <clears throat> opinions on whether to play the starters or not play the starters. It would have been perfectly okay. Look, I picked Indiana, I picked Indiana to go 21-19. and 19. And Christy Sides fuck that up. Because they should have won that game yesterday. I would have been a prophet. But she fucked that up. They went 20 and 20. Great, great season for a team that started off 1 and 8. But when you decide to start Caitlin Clark, Aaliyah Boston, and Kelsey Mitchell, you have given us the indication that you actually want to win the game. And I got no problem with that decision. Yes, transparently, I have no problem with that decision. This is a young team. Going in with a win is beneficial for a young team. That's my opinion. And then, of course, Kelsey Mitchell has her ankle wound in the first four minutes. And you're like, and my, oh, 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 they were up 20 to 2. In the first five minutes of the game, twenty to two. Twenty to two. End of the quarter. It was 24 22. End of the quarter. Game was twenty to two. <clears throat> game was eleven nothing. You decide to play them. Then play them. If Mitchell can't go back in because, you know, it's better, it's precautionary reasons to keep her out, I'm fine with that. What's the problem with, pay, with, with continuing to play Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston? People will completely disagree with me here, and I get it. But if you're not going to play them, don't play them at all. This hokey bullshit of... Oh, well, now Kelsey had this happen, so what do I do? I don't know what to do. Oh, no, what do I do? Get the fuck out of here. You're a goddamn coach. You made a decision before the game to play these women. Why? Because they're young, I presume. Because you claim it's not playoff basketball. It's playoff basketball before playoff basketball. And you yourself have no experience in this because you've never coached at this level. And it's shown every fucking day. Let's take a look here. At, tw at 20 to 2. Twenty to 2. What if I told you that that 20 to 2 turned into 24 22 and that stupid ass never called a timeout? Every time she has an opportunity. To show that she's learning, learning from the dumb shit she does to the game before, she does the same dumb shit again. How does a game go from 20 to 2 to 24 22 and you did not call one single timeout?
let's take a look again here. Second quarter. Jalen Clark plays in the second quarter. So does Aaliyah Boston. They're trailing 34, 31, 39, 30. I'm just going through the quarter quickly. They called a timeout. She called a timeout when the game was 41 39, Washington. Why? I watched the game. Couldn't tell me why. Couldn't, it couldn't tell me why. This is what makes her such a clown. Is that when she she has a team running off buckets, and look, the Mystics hit a bunch of shots that were going boing, 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 boing. Like shots that if I'm with a men's basketball would never go in the basket. But they're hitting these prayer-like shots. They're hitting every part of the rim, and they're going in. And there was a couple of threes that did that, I'm pretty sure, if I recall correctly. They're flukish type of shots. But flukish type of shots get a team back in the game. And it's, it gets their crowd excited. You have to stop. The momentum, like this is stuff that you would be taking in with you to the playoffs. You stop momentum. Not Christy Sides. <clears throat> let it all go. Let, let, let go of the road completely. Let it all go. But then again, that's, I mean, she's playing Christy Waltz in the first half. In a game, I'm looking, I'm going up through this. In a game that's now 39-39 and now goes 41, 39, 42, 39. She calls a timeout with 2.15 to go in the second quarter. Explain that one to me. No logic to that. You know, halftime, the game is 52, 45. Defensively, they were terrible. Defensively, they were terrible. But by that point, you've pretty much seen that she's not going to play her, her main two stars left in Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston. You know, she starts off the, the, the second half. Clark is in the game, but Clark Clark got pulled out. Where did she get pulled out? She got pulled out in the third. She got pulled out at 5 oh, wait, never played again. Caitlin Clark didn't play the final 15 minutes of the game. And at that point, she had eight points, eight assists, and five rebounds. She took five shots the whole game. Third quarter. They immediately jump up and make it a 12-point game, 13-point game, 15-point game. So, again, it was 52 to 45. She lets them run off going a 12, a 12 to 52-45, a 12 to – 12 to 4 run. So, now it's a 15-point game at 64-49. She calls timeout with 631 going the third. This woman will let the game go. She's just so incompetent. She just lets the game go. And look, I don't have at this point like you, you you've given in to the fact that they're probably going to lose. They're down fifteen. Melissa Smith is their leading scorer for much of the game until the end, when it becomes I think uh, Christy Wallace had seventeen uh, to finish because I know Melissa Smith had sixteen. Christy Wallace was a leading scorer, six of eight, seventeen points. I mean, Grace Berger played 12 minutes. I know Nick talked a great deal about Victoria Saxton, and she finished with five points, was a plus eight in five minutes of play, and he raved about her. And I know Katie Lou Samuelson hit a couple of three-point shots. Dantes was largely largely ineffective. In fact, Benley was utterly terrible yesterday, um, minus 22 when she was on the floor, which is pretty horrendous. But for the most part, I mean – Lexi, Lexi Hall takes two shots. This was a bench game. And they ended up finishing, they ended up, ended up shooting the ball, shooting 53% from the field and 10 of 20 from three. I mean, offensively, they weren't, they didn't struggle offensively, but defensively, they fucking suck. They suck. This is the same thing I keep saying. If you can't defend, go into a goddamn zone. I don't care who's on the floor. Then you go to the fourth quarter. You know, they're down end of three. They're down. Sorry, this thing is this thing is moving slowly. This mouse. 
They're down 82 to 66, end of the third. They lost this game by one point. Team that couldn't defend for the first three quarters in the fourth quarter all of a sudden became locked down. But here's what's frustrating about this fourth quarter. You have a chance to coach. And again, she chooses to not coach. And Nick Nick pointed this out. But they're down 86 77 with 508. Katie Lou makes a couple of free throws, then Emily Angster hits hits a three. So 455, they're down 10. She calls a timeout on a coach's challenge, retains the timeout. They score with 345 is 80, 89, 81. Wallace hits a three, makes it a five-point game. But then they give up a three right back to make it an eight-point game again. Vic Saxton hits a layup on a post, makes it on the six. Saxton hits, hits a rebound, hits a three, down to three. You have a chance to win now. See, this is where you have to decide, Coach. Are you trying to win? Are you, are you trying to win? Or are we going back to let's hide our timeouts under our pillow and hope that the timeout fairy comes and brings us more time, brings me some money for saving timeouts? They had three timeouts in the final 90 seconds. <clears throat> three. So they uh, Washington misses a three. Wallace gets a hits a layup. It's a one point game. That's your final score, 92-91. It was 92-91 with 113 left. Turnover. Saxon misses a layup. Defensive rebound. Foul. Mystics missed the layup. Why aren't we calling timeout out here? So let's look at this, these final 49.6 seconds. It's a one-point game. It's one point game. You have a chance to win a correction. I said they had three timeouts. They had two. They had two timeouts. You 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 have a one-point game. This is where these women who are on the court right now are all bench players, are all backups. Victoria Saxton, I know Nick spoke about her, and he was very impressed with her. She did more in five minutes than I've seen Melissa Smith do in five weeks. She boxed out multiple times, boxed out, like used her body to box someone out and grab a rebound, and she did that multiple times in the final few minutes of that game. She hits a great left-handed layup. By the way, she's right-handed. Oh, my God. A left-handed layup by a right-handed player. And yet we got to see Melissa Smith play these games. She hits a three. I mean, he Nick was right on point with that. But now you have a situation where you have two timeouts. You're down by one. You have under 50 seconds left. And instead of Christy Sides calling a timeout here, which I think she should have done, Set up a play, the right play, to get your team the easiest bucket you can. We get this. Swing, swing. Here comes Saxton. At the end, it was a – she was open for a second, but – I don't know that that's the shot. It's a layup. She was, by the time she got, she, she took the shot, it wasn't, she wasn't going to get that shot off. But she fights for it. She gets a foul call on her. Let's just jump to the final 20 seconds here. I just skip past this part. I want to get to the. All right. <clears throat> Shots on rim. Again, you still got two timeouts. Rebound. I'm sorry. Timeout. 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 I'm setting a play to win. I want my team to win this game. I have the ability to help them get there. I'm going to call timeout. I'm going to set up a play. 
with multiple options. But I guess she doesn't think that that's necessary because they've come back with 16 down start the quarter. She might have this thought that their momentum, I'm making up excuses for Christy sides. Let's take a look. You got Wallace top right. You have Samuelson going to the corner. You have Berger running to the left. You have Saxon at the top of the key and, and Erica Wheeler at half court. At this point, with as slow as this play is going, I'm calling timeout. I'm sorry, that's Wallace. That's Wallace on the on the on the, the short corner down below and Berger up top. And now Samuelson's going towards the box with, with Saxon at the elbow. What are we running? What are we running here? I don't mean we. I mean Indiana. What is Indiana running? What is Christie Sides running here? They ran nothing. This is this almost looks like a, a back door. Like come over for a potential back door, and it's not there. But it, now now they're running a pick and roll with Katie Lou Samuelson. I mean, at this point, she should be screaming timeout, screaming it. Another look at this, look at this sickeningly sad excuse for a screen. Kenny Lou Samuelson doesn't stand there long enough to set the screen. You know what I would have preferred if I'm watching this? Set a hard fucking screen. Erica Wheeler go right to the damn basket. Erica Wheeler, beeline your ass to the basket. Go to the basket for a layup. Look at this. She's open. But this is not her game. Pump faking, dribble drive, bad jump shot attempt. 8.5 seconds left. It's in and out. Okay, at this point right here, you got 6.8. You have the ball in hand. Grace Berger is a guard. Timeout. Again, Nick said this in his video. Timeout. Try to win. Try to coach. What are you doing with your timeouts? Are you just take the moment and massage them on your fucking ear? What in the heck? Like, what are we doing? What is she doing? What is what is Christy Sides doing here? <coughs> Burger's dribbling away from the bats. There's 4.1. What is what <laughs> frustrating. That's a frustrating situation because you had look, Katie Lewis Lamison's ball rimmed in and out, but I would think that anyone would prefer that she take that shot over a wide open look. And that's not Katie Lewis Lamison's game. Berger has not played, you know, forever. A pull up 16 footer, it's a makeable shot, but. Yeah, this this is a hard one to swallow when you look at the coaching or lack thereof. I I, li I literally I feel bad for those women. I feel bad for them. I feel bad for that team. I feel bad for that team because they're coached by such a fucking incompetent moron who doesn't know anything about basketball, who doesn't know that her job is to help her team win, and instead. She helps them lose. She, she just helps them lose. She has a chance to help them win. They had three opportunities to win that game, not just on that possession, but the possession before. These women who were on that floor, who battled back from a 16-point deficit, had a chance to win. Look, confidence-wise, I think you got a lot from it. Christy Wallace, she played really, really well. But is Christy Wallace going to play in the playoffs? No. It's not. The only way Christy Wallace would see time on the floor is if one of your three guards and Erica Wheeler are in major foul trouble in the first half of a game. Otherwise, she's not going to play. This game will not make her be on the court against Connecticut at almost any point. Saxton, 
I wouldn't mind seeing on the court. I wouldn't mind it because I know I, I know what I'm gonna I know I'm gonna get some effort. I know I'm gonna get effort, which I don't get when I see Melissa Smith. I know Indiana will get someone that's gonna work hard. Now I don't see her in practice. I don't know what she looks like in practice. I know that in the five minutes she played in this game, for which she should have played more. Nice left handed layup, three point shot, boxing out, rebounds. That's what I see. So yeah, Saxton, I I wouldn't mind. I think she's someone that could be put in that game. But I'm gonna tell you this: the fact that Melissa Smith played in this game is a disgrace. <clears throat> I said earlier in the week that she should have been gotten rid of. I would have packed her locker. And I would have said, you're suspended with pay. Good luck next year, wherever the hell you end up. There's not a chance in the world that she belonged on that floor after that bullshit tweet that she did earlier in the week. Now you're going to have them play against Connecticut in the playoffs? Is that what we're doing? She's going to play Connecticut in the playoffs. Her girlfriend? Well, will Melissa Smith even sleep in the team hotel? On Saturday night, I presume that they're already there. I would think they're already in Connecticut right now because it would be stupid, in my opinion, to go back to Indiana and then fly to Connecticut the next day. I would have been going straight from D.C. to Connecticut. I I, I don't know what's going to happen with that situation, but Alyssa Smith should not be on this team. She's going to be on this team. Anyone that thinks that she should, well, you don't know how cancer destroys destroys chemistry. Cancer destroys a team. And Melissa Smith is a cancer. She is the worst kind of teammate that you have. She doesn't work hard. She doesn't play hard unless she has the ball. She rebounds ineffectively, inefficiently. She lets guards get rebounds over her. She's never in the proper position defensively. She can't guard a parked car. She's a turnstile defensively. She made Angel Reese look like a superstar in offense in the one game that Chicago beat Indiana in when the Indiana was up double digits in the fourth quarter. That game was 100% on Melissa Smith's back, getting absolutely torched by Angel Reese, someone that we all know is completely ineffective on offense. If you get torched by Angel Reese, that speaks volumes as to how bad you are defensively. And that's a problem. And this is really a, this the playoff series will be a, a battle of styles. The one that runs and the one that wants to slow it down. I don't trust Melissa Smith. If I was Kaylin Clark, if I was Kelsey Mitchell, if I was Aaliyah Boston, if I was anyone on the team, I wouldn't trust her. How can you trust someone who is speaking negatively about the team with a game left in the season, and now you're going to play her girlfriend, which in itself is a problem, like this whole dating situation in the WNBA where players are dating players and one player dates a team player from another team. I mean, you don't know what's going on there. I don't trust women enough. to. I don't trust the, the, the emotional state of women enough to think that a woman won't throw a game because she's mad. And it wouldn't shock me. I don't trust her. I wouldn't, I would think that anything I give her, anything she's told in game plan, she will repeat to DJNA Carrington. But in reverse, I don't think DJNA Carrington would repeat a thing to her because DJNA Carrington is a savage. DJNA Car Carrington is a competitor. DJNA Carrington is, is coming for your throat. Melissa Smith doesn't have that personality. Melissa Smith, if she's not scoring, she's completely ineffective as a player. She's you, she's of no use to your team. So in this in this case, Victoria Saxton is a player that I'd probably be looking to bring off the bench. <clears throat> Heck, I'd be starting Temi Fek Benley. I said that before. And then I'd be using Saxton. I'd be using Dantas off the bench. Indiana needs Dantes to score. If she's not scoring, she's completely ineffective as well. But this type of finish to this game where you have a coach who saved, again, 
two timeouts and did not use one to set up one play to try to win the game in a game that happened to have the largest attendance in WNBA history. Thank you, Caitlin Clark. And if I'm a person in D.C., I am pissed off that Caitlin Clark did not play more than 22 minutes. I understand it, but if you were going to play her, play her. If you're not, don't. But you fucked up with her. You fucked with her numbers, which I that bothers me as a fan of hers more than anything. Because if you're going to play her and now you're going to damage her statistics because you played her, you damaged her scoring average. She finished as the leading scorer in Indiana Fever history because Kelsey Mitchell got hurt and Kelsey didn't really play at all either. She played a lot less. But you damaged her numbers. And yes, numbers matter. It's one of those things that I look at it and I look at it from a perspective of if you're going to play her, you play her. If you're not, you don't. But you don't do this bullshit where you played her, you pull her out, you put her back in, you, you take her out, you put her back in. Like, like what do you want to do, Christy Size? Do you have any idea what you're doing? It seems like you're fucking clueless. It doesn't seem like you've proven it to us. You're clueless. You don't have any idea how to take manage a team. And it shows in every single game. That said, I appreciate the, 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 the Fever's fight in the fourth quarter. I appreciate the backups coming to bat and trying to win that game. And I feel bad for them because their coach is absolutely freaking lutely incompetent. And she's done this. She has done the same thing over and over and over and over again. It's it's maddening. You want this coach to learn, and she doesn't. Don't ask a 22-year-old to not get mad at referees who suck consistently. Don't ask her to not get mad and ask her to learn from her mistakes when you don't learn from yours. It's real hard as, a, as an adult to tell your kid, don't do this because this will happen. Learn from the mistake you made. But if I make a mistake, I don't change my behavior. That's Christy Sides. She keeps making the same mistakes over and over again. And it doesn't matter what it, what it is. And that is my biggest concern when it comes to Indiana and the playoffs. Look, they're going to win the series, in my opinion. I think they're going to win the series against Connecticut. And that's my feeling. But it won't be because of Christy Sides. It'll be because Caitlin Clark and Kelsey Mitchell go the fuck off. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Come on now.